You're in a rut, and I am a rut buster. I'm going to bust your rut. How to get out of a rut. Because let's face it, we've all been there. Those times where you're just feeling unmotivated, nothing's going right, you're not getting much done, you don't even really know what you should be working on. It's a horrible place to be. And sometimes they last just for a couple of days, but sometimes they can be months if not years. And so in this very video, we're gonna help you change that and get out of a rut if that's how you're feeling right now. Because the fact is, even the most successful people that you can think of, they have that feeling sometimes. They just know how to get out of it quicker which is exactly what this video is about to get you back on your feet and achieving what I know you are capable of and the first key to getting out of a rut is managing our self-talk because we are the narrators of our own life story and so we need to get that narrative back under control now there's a TV show called Bojack Horseman which some of you may be familiar with and there's an example in that show of extremely negative self-talk which looks a little like this. Breakfast. Oh, I don't deserve breakfast. Shut up. Don't feel sorry for yourself. What does that do? Get breakfast, you stupid fat ass. Now hopefully things aren't remotely as bad as that but I think when you're in a rut it can be quite easy to start having those corrosive thoughts of I'm not good enough for this, I don't deserve this, why is this not working? Getting really frustrated with ourselves and with the world. And of course, that only pushes you further into the rut, so the cycle continues. So how do we change the more positive self-talk? We need to start celebrating the little wins and giving ourselves more credit for things. Sounds like I'm about to burst into a poem. But the fact is when we're in a bit of a rut, it's often because we feel like we're not getting enough done, we feel like we're not doing things well enough. And so one of the ways to kind of counteract that is really start acknowledging every time that we do get something right and something does go well to really change that narrative. An amusing example of this I heard quite recently was about a guy who wanted to drink more water. And so what he would do though is as he was downing a glass of water, he would say to himself in his head, God, you are downing this water like a boss. You are gonna crush it today. You're gonna be so hydrated and all this kind of stuff kind of amping himself up. And obviously all he'd done was drink a glass of water, something very small, very easy to do. But as ridiculous as that might sound, I think there is a real positive psychological effect and a real compounding effect when you start doing this and start acknowledging those little wins no matter how small. Every time that you do something that you set out to do, every time you do something positive for your life, really taking a second to give yourself credit for it. As weird as it may feel at first, over time that builds up in such a positive way. But by far the best way to give yourself more little wins and reasons to celebrate and give yourself credit is simply by having a morning and an evening routine. And obviously we all already have routines every morning and evening. We might not even think of them as routines, but you know, brushing your teeth is part of your morning and evening routine, I hope. But we need to add a couple of extra things into those because the fact is, if you can have a morning and evening routine that you set out every day to do these set things that are pretty easy to do, but productive things that are going to better your life overall, well, that means you're starting and ending your day every single day with little successes, little reasons to give yourself credit and improve that self-talk and improve how you're feeling about yourself and the positivity of the narrative of your story. Now, after first hearing that, the temptation might be to go and just add loads and loads of things to your morning and evening routine because then you've got more and more reasons to feel good about yourself and more and more little wins and successes. But I think you're actually better off just sticking with five key things that you're gonna do every morning and every evening because if it becomes too long and too complicated well it's going to be much more difficult to actually stick with it in the long term and five things is really all you need in terms of what things to pick the crucial element here though is that it's things that are within your control having close a sale in your morning routine might be nice to think that we'd close a sale every morning and make some money but it's not within our control we'd be relying on other people so it shouldn't be in there should be things we know we can do ourselves and fairly easy straightforward things i know that one of the uh, famous marines was talking before on a video about how he starts every day simply by making his bed because that's something that is so simple to do but it means he starts his day off with that little discipline, that little win, that little victory, just you know the fact that he's got up when he wanted to 
get up at the time he said he was going to and he's gone and made his bed so he's already started his day right and successfully and that's something that you could perhaps do yourself but some even better ones perhaps are things that are healthy for you so if you want to factor in having some kind of workout it doesn't have to be going to the gym just you know five or ten minutes to get your heart racing having that in your morning routine is always going to be useful I know a lot of people like to have some kind of meditation or yoga, some kind of more spiritual thing, something that's gonna maybe help relax you and set your mind for the day ahead. It's up to you what you have in it. Obviously, you know what is gonna be considered something that's healthy and good for you, but as long as you've got a couple of those sprinkled in that you're gonna do every morning that's extremely achievable, you are setting yourself up for success for the rest of the day. But the reason I'm kind of stressing this point about morning and evening routines, even though it's something we've all heard about before, is that not only does it give you those little wins and reasons to give yourself credit and feel good about yourself because you've started and finished each day with these successes, even more importantly than that, it gives your day structure. Because if you know every single day exactly how you're gonna be starting it and finishing it, that just gives you that extra element of being in control because one of the biggest problems that people have and one of the reasons people feel like they're in a rut is because they're just kind of drifting through life without as much purpose as they normally have. They feel a little bit lost. And having these routines and these rituals in place every single day gives you some of that purpose back, gives you back that structure. Okay, so now that we've got your mornings and evenings sorted, what about that huge chunk of time in the middle? Well, as we were just saying, one of the big problems with being in a rut is that you don't feel like you have that purpose anymore. You don't have that drive of what you're working towards. And so what if right now you had a genie, you click your fingers, you rub your magic lamp, whatever it takes to summon a genie. And when he arrives, that blue floating guy, I'm picturing the one from Aladdin, obviously, and he arrives and you get to tell him exactly what you want, how you want your life to look specifically, you know, where you would be and how it would all feel and everything that you can imagine. But the fact is, that isn't just a fantasy because someone has a life like that. There's someone who has achieved the things you want to achieve. There's someone who's doing the things you want to do. And so you need to then go and find someone who has that kind of lifestyle or is living that kind of life. And after a bit of searching, you will find someone online and you will find how they got there. You will find a rough idea of what steps they took to achieve that. And what we need to do then is simply reverse engineer success. That's a phrase that I love because it's so true that we know these things that we want are possible because other people have already done them and are doing them right now. And we just need to understand how they did that. And so once you have this mentality of reverse engineering success, you can then go and set goals based on what these people did who have achieved what you want to achieve and are doing what you want to do. Once you know the processes they went through and what they're doing at the moment and all of this stuff, you can then set goals based on that that you can work towards yourself. And I appreciate that might sound a little bit vague, but the bottom line with all this is simply that we need to set goals, concrete goals that will lead us to the vision that we have, that genie vision of where we want our life to be. So that we now have a clear path that we're on, that we're following to get to that end results. Is this making sense so far? I hope it is because I know we're going through quite a lot here, but hopefully this is just giving you a couple of steps that you can then implement right after this video that are actually going to make a noticeable difference and put you on that path like we were just saying, because once you have that feeling back of being in control and knowing where you're heading, that is going to very quickly get you out of a rut. So please leave a like for this video if it's helping so far, and if you do have any questions, then by all means drop a comment because I reply to everything. Okay, back to it though because once you followed those steps hopefully you will start to regain that feeling of knowing where you're heading again and having that purpose back but we still have one final step here because the fact is to get different results from what you're getting right now you need to do things differently makes sense right but to do that we have to be very brutally honest about any bad habits we have and so i'm going to introduce you to something called the rule of replacement and the rule of replacement states that in order to remove a bad habit we need to replace it with a better habit 
because by definition, habits are hard to break. But if we just try and go cold turkey, then like the addicts we are, we will really struggle. So instead we need to kind of phase ourselves out of the habit by replacing it with something that's a little bit similar but much better for us. Okay, so let me give you an example so that last point actually makes sense. And I think a very relevant example is social media because a lot of us spend far more time than we would like browsing social media, which can take time away from the things that actually matter most to us. I know myself, I've found myself scrolling through Facebook in the middle of the day thinking, how did I even get here? Why am I doing this? But as we said, it's a habit and these platforms are designed to be addictive. So if that sounds at all relatable to you, then and using this rule of replacement, perhaps what we could do is replace the positions on our phone where those apps are, replace them with new apps that are a bit more productive. For, for example, an app I like to use is Quora. I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's a question and answer app sort of a bit like Yahoo Answers used to be, but instead of all the dodgy, terrible answers, there's actually some really useful and interesting answers. So if you downloaded that app, you put it in the same position where Facebook or Instagram is, and you went into the app and you added some relevant topics that you're interested in, maybe topics around a skill that you wanna learn more about, or just something that's gonna give you some useful information, you add those kind of topics, What's gonna happen is when you naturally go to click on that place on your phone, rather than getting time-wasting things on Facebook, you're gonna have all these answers to interesting questions on a topic that you're interested in and you're gonna be learning stuff. It's gonna be more productive. And so you've kind of replaced that social media habit with a better habit. You're still going on your phone, so it's not perfect. You'll have to phase that out as well, but it's a nice little stepping stone. And so think about apps you could add to your phone that achieve a similar thing that are gonna be a bit more productive. And that's just one example of the rule of replacement. And as we kind of touched on earlier, when it comes to this topic of removing bad habits from our lives, I think it just comes down to being brutally honest with ourselves about what those bad habits are and what we actually care about the most. And I think for a lot of people that might be having a better diet and being healthier. But if people go down the cold turkey route that we said not to do, what that would probably look like is throwing out all the unhealthy stuff in their house, all the pizza, all the chocolate, and just leaving all the really healthy stuff, all the vegetables, all the kale and the cabbage. But what will happen then is when they get really hungry and they're sick of eating vegetables, they'll cave in and go and order a really greasy takeaway. Whereas if we used the rule of replacement here, what that would look like is you'd replace the really, really unhealthy stuff with some more middle ground stuff. Things that are fairly nutritious, but still actually taste nice without being the most healthy things you can possibly imagine. Kind of that stepping stone to ease you into a healthier lifestyle rather than going the really extreme version straight away. And so this rule of replacement can really apply in all areas of your life with whatever bad habits you're trying to break. And one final example that I really recommend is replacing Netflix and TV with Young Magnates. And so there we have it. If you actually follow those steps of managing your self-talk and setting yourself up for these easy wins and structuring your day and your mornings and evenings, and then actually setting goals for yourself that push you towards the vision of where you want your life to be, and then you remove any bad habits you have as well by using the rule of replacement. But with all of those things combined, you are gonna be out of a rut in no time at all. I hope that was of some help, and I really do wish you all the best. Let me know if I can ever help with anything in particular. But in the meantime, I've got a couple of videos for you that are a little bit lighter. So feel free to go and check either of those out because I think you will really enjoy them. Thanks again for watching. Cheers.